Hey there guys, today's gonna be kind of a hodgepodge of a few random things on the travel trailer project. I'm gonna start out by installing some RV steps to replace the milk crate that I've been using to get in and out of the trailer for the past several months. Then I'm gonna show you one of a couple of different security features that I'm gonna be adding to the trailer to hopefully aid in its uh, theft, uh, theft resistance. And then I'm going to make a little modification to the trailer jack to make it a little bit easier to use. And then as always, I'll talk about what's to come and maybe show you a sneak peek of uh, the cabinets I've started inside. Here are the steps that I'm gonna be installing. These are a pre-manufactured double RV folding step from Elkhart Tool and Die. I did not pay for these steps. They actually sent me an email about four weeks ago asking if I would like to use some of their steps on my project, and obviously I said yes. Uh, the ironic thing is that I was looking at almost these exact same steps on Amazon, and I was about to purchase them, uh, but obviously I did not have to. So this is kind of how they work. They fold out like this, and then the second step folds down and it'll look something like that uh, once it's installed. So let me get the underside prepared. We'll put these on and see how they function. So in keeping with the theme of this project of doing things way out of order, these steps are certainly no different. What I'm doing here is making brackets for me to put on the underside of the trailer where I can mount the steps to. Uh, again, if this was just a steel frame, I could have and should have put them in at that time. But quite honestly, as I've mentioned before, I just wasn't thinking about it. So now is as good a time as any. It worked pretty good. And one more thing, because I know some people will probably ask um, if they sent me any stabilizer jacks for these steps. Uh, no, they didn't. They actually offered to, but I told them that I already had some jacks that I would use in place of it. Um, these RV steps, from what I've read online, are fine to just use like this. Um, if you're stopping or just for a night or so, but if you're going to uh, set up for like a week or two for a long camping trip, you really ought to have some stabilizer jacks to help uh, stabilize the steps and help prolong their life. And I'm just going to use these A-frame jacks that I originally got uh, for this trailer, but they ended up being too small. So that's what I'll end up using when this is out in this format. I'll set one up here, one up there, and then I may put the other two underneath here. And this is kind of what the stabilizer jacks will look like underneath the steps. As I mentioned before, if we're just going to stop for a night, I probably will not put these out. But if we're going to be camping for a week or two in the same spot, 
I'll put these stabilizers under here and maybe some under here to provide a really nice rock solid footing for the steps. And it will also help to keep the trailer from rocking when people are uh, coming in and out. I'm about 215 pounds, uh, so I would say those are pretty solid. Now the steps are installed, next up on the agenda is the first of two security features that I'm going to be adding to the trailer to hopefully aid in its theft resistance. The first of these features is pretty simple, it's just a chain and a padlock that goes through the wheel and around the leaf springs and axle and is basically just intended to make it a bit harder for a thief to take it. Um, but what I currently have is just a standard uh, big box store padlock and this old chain that I happen to have on hand. And I'm looking to upgrade it to a higher quality chain and lock. And I'll talk a little bit about those now. So here's the chain and lock that I'm looking to replace my current setup with. And the reason for that is because the chain and padlock that I'm currently using are just things that I had on hand and are very much in the realm of hardware store or utility grade components, meaning they can be cut with bolt cutters probably in a second or two, and they don't really offer a ton of real security, uh, more of just a deterrence type of security. So I'm looking to replace them with this chain and padlock. This chain is a paywag or PWAG chain. I got it online and it has three eighths of an inch links that are squared off, meaning it makes it harder for a, a bolt cutter to get a bite on them. And they are hardened. Um, so I've read and seen online that these are pretty much bolt cutter proof. And the padlock that I'm gonna be using is a Warlock padlock. I got this off of Amazon and it has a very strange kind of key that uh, I've just never seen before. Um, but it seems to be that it is much more of a pick proof lock. Uh, I, as I understand it, no lock is completely pick proof, but maybe for the common thief, this will help out a lot. It has a boron shackle and honestly for the size, it's gotta be the heaviest padlock I think I've ever held. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be using, and uh, I'll put it on now and, and I'll show you what it looks like. And that is what it looks like. I don't know what else there is to say other than the fact that I feel much better having it on. And it was a heck of a lot easier to string through the wheel than the other chain, which was probably about 12 feet long. Um, as for the other security feature that I mentioned... Uh, this is one of two. The other one is going to be a lock that I will build in the coming weeks that will mount to the coupler. You can find these type of locks online, but I figured it would be more fun to build them. Uh, so I'm going to eventually build something that will wrap around that coupler and keep that uh, basically disabled from somebody hitching it up. And the last thing I'm gonna to do today is make my trailer jack operate just how my stabilizer jacks operate with a drill and a socket. It currently works with this handle, which works perfectly fine, but uh, I just wanna make everything streamlined and I think it'll be a cool little upgrade. And if you're wondering, I will also have a hand crank that will fit over all of these sockets just in case my drill runs out of batteries. And now I think I'll show you a couple of the things that I've been working on for the next part of the travel trailer project.
This right here is the upper kitchen cabinet. This will go directly above the kitchen countertop where the sink will be. And the doors just flip up like this, like all of the other cabinets that I've built. I have the same type of hinges. Um, although these hinges don't quite hold these doors up that well since they're a little bit bigger of a door. So I may end up putting some struts or something like that. This will go against the ceiling and this backside you can see is open. Uh, that will mount against the back wall. So now let me take you in the trailer and I'll show you what I've got started for the kitchen area, countertop area. And here's what I've got started for the lower kitchen cabinets. It's obviously just a base frame right now, but as you can tell from the countertop, this is where the sink is gonna go. And then I plan to add a bank of drawers on that side. And then down here, I will have the gray water tank uh, for the sink to empty into. And I might have some storage down there. And I also plan to have a little cubby somewhere right here for this uh, Coleman stove to be able to slide in and out. So we can set it up there and use it if need be. There's a window for ventilation there and then the fan is directly above. Uh, but we <laughs> still plan on doing most of the cooking outside on a picnic table. So I think that's about it. All right guys, I think that is pretty much gonna do it for this part of the travel trailer project. I hope maybe some of the things I did or showed in here were interesting to you or maybe inspired some sort of project of your own. Um, and as always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, check me out on Instagram for kind of behind the scenes stuff of all these things. And uh, I think I've already talked enough, so I will let you go now. See ya.